today. Bring us hope and peace. Come, let us worship God who brings hope and peace. Praise be to God for God's healing mercies. Amen. And now let us continue in worship together as the praise team leads us in song. Good morning. First of all, y'all are welcome to sit down. Oh, y'all are so good. Y'all don't even have to tell me tell you. All right. Well, I am so excited today. Today is our promotion uh, Sunday. Today we are promoting. We are promoting from one small group within the church um, to another uh, small group in the church. So today we're doing things a little differently. Um, 
And so I'm just calling their names. They've already been given their um, special things, their certificates or Bibles or things like that. And it was funny. I said, y'all don't have to come up here with me today. And every one of them thanked me. I'm not sure what that's about. Um, so again, um, this is a very special time. And so we, first of all, we want to, if you will join me in just giving everyone a round of applause, all of our uh, kindergartners, third graders, fifth graders, six, uh, and seventh graders. So we're extremely excited to honor everyone here. Um, and so we have a few of our little ones. Um, and again, I just want to thank everybody for filling out your forms. If you missed it, please let me know. We want to celebrate everyone. Um, and our first one is for kindergarten, and that is Miss Ella Bell. And we have also Connor and Melody and Ava and Gage and Kira and Kaiser and McKenna and Olivia and Porter and Alex and Ellie and Gabby. So if you'll give them all a huge round of applause. This is always a special time, this promoting from one group to another group. I'll, I've already told a couple of the kids that I have held them back at church so they can stay with me. Um, but the hardest group every year is our seventh graders. As they um, continue their faith journey from the children's ministry to the youth ministry. And I tell them that they are not losing us, but they are gaining another amazing group of people that can love them, guide them, and support them on their faith journey. And so we put a, together a little video for our um, seventh graders, which again are Alex and Ellie and Gabby. Um, and so I hope you enjoy this video. So we are ex extremely excited and we wish you well this year. And as all of us are going back to school, um, we are praying for each and every one of you. And we can't wait to hear all of your amazing stories. Um, but thank you. Uh, thank you again. And I want to say about our, first of all, this was the first year um, that our youth were able to serve at VBS. And they were amazing. Um, and one of the groups, our seventh graders, they worked the entire time. They were supply team. And so um, Alex and Gabby and Ellie just worked so hard. And I was just so proud to see the amazing um, gifts that they have and how they serve the Lord for them. So we are extremely excited and proud of all of our kids, but we're very proud of our seventh graders. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you to, uh, you know, also one of the things about uh, promoting is also uh, to the parents and the family and friends who have uh, been faithful in, in getting those kids here and, and uh, teaching them about faith at home too. Um, it's wonderful to see that as sort of a, a moment of the bigger picture um, and to celebrate as our kids grow um, and how the church surrounds them and the family surrounds them and making that happen. So this morning we are um, beginning a new sermon series. 
Uh, it's called, it's electric, <laughs> and I can't say it without, you know, the electric slide popping into my head. So if you go home with that in your uh, head uh, this afternoon, you'll know why. Um, but what we're going to be looking at over the next three weeks is Jesus' power um, to change our lives, to change the world, um, and how, um, how magnetic it is that it draws us to him, how powerful it is in, to change things in our lives for the better. Um, and so we begin this morning by looking at um, a story from Mark's gospel about a woman who had a very terrible condition that uh, she was unable to be healed from until she found Jesus. I think you'll recognize this story. It's from Mark chapter 5, and I'll begin reading in verse 24. A swarm of people were following Jesus, crowding in on him. A woman was there who had been bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a lot under the care of many doctors and had spent everything she had without getting any better. In fact, she had gotten worse. Because she had heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his clothes. She was thinking, if I can just touch his clothes, I'll be healed. Her bleeding stopped immediately, and she sensed in her body that her illness had been healed. At that very moment, Jesus recognized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? His disciples said to him, don't you see the crowd pressing against you? Yet you ask who touched me? But Jesus looked around carefully to see who had done it. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. So, you know, one of the things about the world we live in today is it's really easy for us to like or to follow just about anybody on the earth. There are teens out there who are called social media influencers, and they're making millions of dollars because they've somehow managed to rack up tens of thousands of followers. And so companies pay these teens to sell their products through social media uh, posts. I think a lot of you know by now that I, um, that I, I'm really into cycling, and I discovered this year during the Tour de France uh, that I can follow many of these elite cyclists on this social media platform called Strava. Strava is this place where people can share their workouts, and it shows things like pace and power and, and calories burned, and so on Strava, I started following all of these famous cyclists so I can see how my own <laughs> cycling compares. Not even close not even close, but it, it is amazing to see what they're doing. So I share that with you to make this point. You know, it, in our high-tech connected world, it is beyond easy to follow just about anybody we want, which got me wondering, who do I choose to follow? Why do I follow them? Who do you follow and why? How do we follow these people, whether on social media or otherwise? And then, as we follow them, what sort of influence do they have on our lives? You know, 2,000 years ago, Jesus traveled all around the Sea of Galilee. And he was calling people and inviting people to follow him. But following Jesus then and now, it requires far more than just clicking a button or, or subscribing to some feed. Because the thing about following Jesus is it requires a whole life change. So as we think about what it means to follow Jesus with our whole lives, this story of the woman who had been hemorrhaging for 12 years is really important. So back in Jesus' day, if you bled you were considered unclean. And so this woman who is ritually unclean has been suffering with this condition for more than a decade. And she makes her way through Capernaum until she finds Jesus. Mark tells us at the beginning of this passage that a swarm of people was following him. 
And when the bleeding woman sees the crowd, she begins to push through. Now, let me tell you that if somebody who is unclean touches somebody else, that makes that person unclean too. So as she's making her way to Jesus, everybody that she's touching is becoming unclean as well. But you know, after 12 years of suffering with this affliction, this woman was not concerned about that. She wants to be healed. And she knows that Christ can do that. But what about us? Does Jesus' love and power compel us to seek him out? To reach for him no matter what it takes? But even more than that, does my life, does the way we live our lives compel others to search for Jesus? and to reach for him. Does my faith, does your faith, does our faith point to the power of Christ's love? When that bleeding woman touched Jesus' clothes, not his hand, not his face, his clothes hanging off of him, The power went out of Jesus, and she was healed. Jesus' power healed her. Paul reminds us of of Jesus' power in 2 Corinthians, a power so great that we can be fearless even in the face of death. A power so great, Paul says, it will make us new. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation, Paul says. So if we really want our lives to change, then we have to throw ourselves at Christ, just like this woman did. We have to seek him out above everything else. We have to follow him, not just on paper, not just by signing on a dotted line, not just by clicking some button or joining some group, but with our whole lives. We have to follow Christ with a faith that trusts that Jesus really can make us new. And then when he calls us, which he does all of his disciples and says, come and follow me. And we turn our whole lives over to him. Everything, everything old will pass away and we will all be made new. So as we think about being made new this morning, about the power of Christ to change our lives, one of the um, symbols that we have sort of of resurrection, of being made new, is the butterfly, right? Because it starts as a caterpillar, it goes into a cocoon, and it comes out as a butterfly. So you have in your baskets um, some cut out butterflies on little pieces of tissue paper. You also have uh, some balloons. So what you're going to do is you're going to blow up the balloon and tie it up. And then somebody needs to volunteer their hair. Because <laughs> you're going to rub the balloon against somebody's hair. And with the, uh, the um, butterflies laid out flat on the table, hold the balloon near the butterflies and watch what happens. And as you do that, reflect on the power of Christ as you watch how these butterflies begin to move and change. Reflect on the power of Christ to change us. And you can do that using these questions that are there on this sheet. This is all described on this sheet of paper in your basket. The questions are, who do you choose to follow and how do you decide who to follow? How can we clear away the barriers that keep us from following Jesus? And how does following Jesus change us? Let's take some time and do this activity and have this discussion together. Continue to enjoy that and to reflect on uh, God's power in our lives. Now we're going to turn um, to a time of prayer. And, you know, one of the ways that we can really experience God's power and God's work in the world is is by bringing things to him in prayer and and entering his presence in prayer. And so as we come to this time of prayer this morning, we especially want to be in prayer for the Meffert family who lost their
son um, David last week. We also want to continue to lift up um, Chris Moya as he um, is battling COVID. We also want to continue to be in prayer for Dwayne um, and for Tina as uh, they deal, as, as Dwayne is um, dealing with this uh, pancreatic cancer and all that is um, coming along with that. Will you bow with me now as we pray together? Gracious and loving God, we come into your presence today as a people who know your power to do good and even miraculous work in this world. And in this time of worship, especially, we turn to you in praise and thanksgiving for the many blessings that you bring into our lives and for the new life that you have made possible for each of us in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Especially this morning, Lord, we come to you as a people who, who want to lift before you these folks that we know and love who are facing such challenges right now, whether that's illness or, or grief, whether it's um, uncertainty or, or strife, Lord, all of these people that we have named, that we have listed before you, the ones whose names we don't even know, we bring them into your presence, God. And we pray that your power would be at work. We pray that you would bring healing. We pray that you would bring comfort and peace. We ask, God, that you would work according to your will. And we put our faith and our trust in you, because we know you to be a God of grace and of mercy and of love, and especially a God of life. And so, Lord, may each of us experience that life in new and amazing and powerful ways. May the whole world experience that in new and amazing ways so that more and more people might come to know what it is to be in Christ and to be made new. We pray these things in his precious and holy name as we lift our prayer together by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Indeed, God works in our lives in amazing ways. And sometimes it's so amazing and so miraculous that we wonder how we can give thanks to God. And there's lots of ways we can do that through worship, through offering ourselves in service to others. And one way that God told, has told us we can thank him is by sharing our gifts, our resources. And so we turn now to this time of offering and we bring our gifts before the Lord. And you can do that at the offering stations. You can give online and the website uh, by texting to give. As we take this moment now to return thanks to God, may God receive these gifts, bless them and use them to bring new life in this community and beyond. And let's enjoy this offering song from our praise team.
Let's stand and sing this last one with us. Do another new one, but we can pick it up pretty quick. Forget the wonders of how you brought deliverance, the exodus of my heart. You found me, you freed me, held back the waters of my We know that Jesus' power can change us. It also has the power, if we share it, to, share, to change others. I invite you 
to live into that power. And when you do, everything changes. This week, as you go out into uh, the world, live like you believe that God's power changes everything because it does. Thank y'all.